Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Good evening. Welcome to the Soap Series. I am your host, Doug, and uh, along with my co-host, Pam. Pam, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. You're doing great? No, no problem. Uh, tonight we have a, an amazing guest with us tonight. You know him from multitudes of different genres, including soap operas on General Hospital and uh, and Bold and the Beautiful, uh, even over in uh, the film industry and reality TV shows such as My Antonio. And uh, most recently, this uh, this earlier in this year, we had Celebrity Wife Swap. So uh, we have Antonio Sabato Jr. with us right now. Welcome to the show, Antonio. Oh, thank you for having me. It's it's, uh, it's great to be here. Thank you. Ah, you're welcome. Okay, uh, Pam, I'm going to let you start off tonight. And, you're going to uh, let me? Okay. <laughs> no, I'm going to let you start off with the questions. Um, I usually always take, you know do the lead, but tonight, uh, for, for your, since you're a big fan, I'll let you start off tonight. So go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, I actually have a question from a listener that is with us in, at every show, except unfortunately he couldn't be here today. Um, and his name is David Salvador. I don't know how to say it, S-A-L-V-A-G-N-I. I think it's an Italian name. Um, and he says, I have a two-part question for Antonio. Could you ask him how much he enjoyed singing and if he plans on continuing? Uh, yes, I do. I enjoy singing a lot. Um, it's one of my hidden passions. I really enjoy it, especially Italian music. I, I like to sing that a lot. Uh, yes, I, I, if I have the opportunity, and I will have the opportunity again in the future, I would love to sing again in front of a lot of people. I, I had the pleasure of going to uh, to Italy last year, and I sang in front of my whole country, uh, oh, which wow. was great. Um, yeah, it was awesome. I was I was invited to uh, to sing uh, on a on a TV show called uh, in English it would be called uh, I Sing uh, Io Canto, and uh, mm-hmm. it's a it's a TV show based on like American Idol, but instead of having adults, this is all little kids and teenagers, um, all Italians, obviously, and I went there and I sang with the finalists who end up winning the show with a, with an amazing uh, teenager, uh, and we sang an Italian song together, and I had a great time doing it, so I would love to do more of that for sure. Oh, my gosh. Is that online anywhere so we can listen to it? Um, I think you probably can find it somewhere. Um, like I said, it's Io, Io Canto. Is it's an it's mm-hmm. an Italian TV show that goes on for about four to five months at a time, and they should have a clip somewhere of me singing. And um, it's a special song to me. It's an Italian song from a a guy by the name of Eros Ramazzotti, which is uh, one of my favorite artists. He's uh, from Rome. He's an Italian guy, and I love the song called Adesso Tu, which is um, now you actually, and and. And I just sang it, and it was it was great to be there at home uh, in Milan, singing in front of the whole country, and um, I had a great time. So I, I definitely would take an opportunity to do that again if I if I'm asked. Sure. Wow. That would well, be that's wonderful. One I, that's one thing I did not know, and I thought I was a huge fan. I'm gonna have to get on Google after this. <laughs> yeah, I know. Me too. <laughs> um, well, I want to start out with the uh, the present. Your Twitter timeline. Um, just some of your recent tweets are like, "Good night and wishing you a beautiful, amazing, loving week." And if I told you are amazing, would you believe me? Okay, great. You are. Um, a lot of these tweets are are very, very spiritual and emotional. And the question is, what? Where is the incredible spirituality and positivity coming from? Did you always have it, or is it a newfound piece that you found in your life of recent years? Uh, I, I think I think you always hope that you have it. I think I have it more. I'm I'm just uh, spiritually, I'm very much um, a really happy person. Uh, I have everything I need, and I'm very blessed to have just so many great things. And um, and I like to share that with the world. Um, you know, I, I think that. Um, it takes work to be happy every day and just to find something that you know makes you happy like a family or um or god or your work or whatever it is it may be and just be blessed and just share it with the world there's nothing wrong with it and uh i uh, feel that um uh, you know right now in my life especially i am grateful and blessed um and looking forward to the future so I, I uh, and, and then there's also there's so much negativity and there's so much stuff going on in the world that it's quite the opposite. So I, I like to share things that uh, are pretty much um, 
heartfelt and good and just go have a great day and and just go get them you know don't don't give up on your dreams you know and uh, just just keep fighting for it and uh keep having a smile on your face and those are my tweets pretty much i don't like to gossip i don't like to to talk politics or uh things to just uh you know they don't get me anywhere i like to think uh the more positive the more positive you can share um and the more you can give to anyone to strangers to anyone in the world uh is a blessing so i i, I want to keep doing that well, that, that, and I, I think a, more people should do that because it really makes life more pleasurable. Yeah, I, I, you know, I am. I'm not here to, uh, you know, the social media and, and the last. I mean, who would have thought, you know, ten years ago that we would be tweeting and just sending mex- messages mm-hmm. and just little things here and there all over the world. Uh, and now that we are so blessed to have that, uh, so fortunate to be able to speak our mind and say things. Then why not just say the good things? Um, right. There's there's just so much of the bad, and there's so much gossip. Um, I tend to focus on on really good things that make me happy. And if I can reach someone out there and help their day uh, by sharing what I'm doing, then I want to keep doing that. Thank you. We appreciate that. <clears throat> my, uh, my next pleasure. question. Really? I'm sorry. No, I was just saying it's it's my pleasure to to oh. even be able to to say things that, that mean a lot to me. Thank you. Um, actually, it's not even a question that I have. Um, my friend Sarah Adams, uh, she was reading a book by C. Lee Harrington and Denise Beebley, and uh, it's about soap opera fans. Uh, she wrote it, mm-hmm. I guess, in 1995. And she was telling me that on page 43, there's a quote by a soap opera fan that says, I cannot believe I just spent $750 for dinner with Antonio Sabato Jr. Do you remember that? <laughs> really? <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't remember that, but uh, hopefully uh, she spent it right. Hopefully, it's, yeah. hopefully it turned out to be a good dinner. Wow. <laughs> I, um, especially back in the day. I don't remember I'm sure that, but she I loved think it. It, for it. <laughs> it must have been some kind That's of charity or fan event or something. I'm not sure exactly what it was. Yeah, I, I would hope so, and I hope that the food was good. Yeah, <laughs> really for that price. <laughs> um, for any listeners that are listening, if you do want to call in and talk to Antonio, uh, about halfway through the hour, we will be taking callers three four seven two one five nine five zero three. If you're on the line already, you make sure you press 1. That is the only way I'm able to know that you want to talk to us. Okay. Um, one of your mo- uh, Antonio, one of your most recent widely seen appearances was on ABC Celebrity Live Swap. That got to be, that has to be incredibly mm-hmm. personal. How did you decide to do that show? And in retrospect, what do you have to take away from that experience? Uh, we, uh, me and Cheryl, uh, had a great time. I mean, you know, in, in four days of somebody's life you can't really put it in a nutshell what really happens but you know it's a TV show you want to make it entertaining um, and as real as possible obviously but um, you know from what I know it was the most watched show on on, on the series and it was um, something that a lot of people watched and, and respected and, and liked a lot and we were uh, we had a great time doing it and, and you know it was it was hard for us it was physically hard because you know, I I had to um, you know I I was taking care of a of a small baby by myself as a father and and Cheryl had to be away from from our son for almost five days, which was extremely difficult. Um, so for us as parents, it was difficult to be apart in such an early stages of our son. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, uh, we wanted to show um, a real life uh, that two people in the industry have. Um, and what you see is what you get, you know. But, you know, we, we, there's so much more to our lives, you know. If, it, right. it would take a lot more than, than 45 minutes to really establish that. Exactly. Right. And um, we were we fans were glad that they had the additional segment at the end to know that you and Cheryl were doing were doing good. So are, are things right. doing good since then? <laughs> yeah, my, you know, listen, uh, it, it's it's a reality show, and you have to have some, some drama. You have to have some things like that, but... Uh, you know, we're not the, the type of people that will have the industry or, or uh, 
a TV show ruin our, our lives. We, we're very serious. We're very devoted to each other as a family and as a and as a unit, and uh, and we care about each other extremely. So uh, we're real, um, and we're going to keep working on our relationship and our lives. And no TV show is going to split us up. I will tell you that much. No, no. Wow. And you know I'm what? Thinking. It's 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 a real relationship, as you said. Everybody goes through it. You just went through it on TV. That's all. So. You know, yeah, nobody I, thinks uh, anything. Oh, it's fine. I, 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 you know, to be in this business, you gotta, you gotta be strong, and you, you can't mm-hmm. let uh, the outside world affect affect you. Otherwise, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be in it, and I wouldn't want to be in it for the rest of my life. It's it. Right. So for us, it's like, man, we're we're so happy. We're we're good, and uh, we're blessed, and, and so why not? You know, I mean, listen, it was an opportunity for us to. To uh, to share something for uh, to, to the people that wanted to see it, and it was great. We had a great time. At the end of it, it was it was, and to see my daughter just uh, on camera to see how beautiful yeah. my daughter really. I mean, I know it, but just to see her on camera was really cool. And she went back to school, and everybody was like, oh, "I saw you on TV last night." Uh-huh. So it was, <laughs> it was, really, really was she cool. thrilled with that, or was she embarrassed when people you know brought it up to her? No, she was thrilled. She was happy. Good. She was thrilled, and she she talked to all her friends, and and um, and she looked amazing. I mean, I'm so grateful to have a daughter like her, and um, she's just amazing. So to have that for me, and to keep that for our family, um, that we can look back and and see those moments and stuff, and. There's there's just a lot of great things that happen uh, that will that will cherish, um, you know. From our perspective, right. to see something like that, we're we're happy about it. It was fun. And one of your new projects, I know, is that you open up an acting school. And how is that going? That is going great. Um, I have I have a lot of amazing children. Uh, they range from the uh, ages from seven to seventeen years old at the moment, and um, we have about a total of. 50 kids right now and, and, and growing and I'm just getting attached to these kids and I love I found a new passion for teaching I really enjoy it um, I also I'm starting a new magazine in Tulsa uh, called uh, Real Magazine that, that's going to come out um, on the stand next week that I'm really really happy about So and, and me and Cheryl have a couple of other businesses that we're, we're starting to do this year um, and she has her music as well so um, you know, and then I have the Three Stooges, which comes out in a couple of weeks in the theaters. Yeah, uh, fairly. I have um, but I'm really excited about this new magazine. It's just uh, it's going to be a community type of magazine starting um, next month in Texas, uh, and this will pretty much give tools to help students and uh, through high school and college, uh, you know, with relationships and money and and any issues that they're going through and. And also is going to promote the businesses around the local areas and um, and awareness in the community as well. And I wanted to do it in Texas because I love the state. Uh, and then I want to spread out to uh, as well as Oklahoma and places like that. So um, the first issue will be out next month. And, and that's one of my businesses that I'm really, really happy about. And, and um, so I'm trying to do a lot of things at the same time. Um, and that keeps me busy as well as being a, a, the best father I know how to be. And... So, and now I'm talking to you guys, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just you just you just uh, mentioned the uh, hotly anticipated Three Stooges movie. How did that come about, and what will you be playing? Um, well, you got to see it. Uh, I, I have a small part in the film, but I was asked, um, you know, by the Fairley Brothers uh, to audition for them, and they didn't tell me what it was for. And then I got oh, no. part, I'm playing one of the. <laughs> yeah, you you have to see it. Uh, uh, it's going to be at the end of the film, um, but I, I just spent a, an, an amazing time with both of the brothers, and, and it was it was just fascinating to, to hang out with these guys. I mean, they're just so um, they're just so gifted and talented, and you know, Bobby Fairley and Peter Fairley are just really really cool people. And um, I mean, I, w- I just I was so happy to be working with them. It was great, and the movie is just out of this world, man. People people are going to really laugh on this one. 
Yeah, I, I can't wait. It's, t- it's taken Hollywood a long time to come up with this. So I'm glad that, that we uh, uh, fans of the original t- uh, TV show now have the big screen yeah. version to go to. And they look I must, I de- they look identical to the original. It's amazing. Oh, you have no idea. Just wait and see. I mean, this movie is funny. I mean, this movie is pretty cool. You'll laugh. You'll have a good time at the movies, that's for sure. Did you get to spend any time with Sean Hayes, which is another one of my all-time favorite actors? Um, I didn't spend time with him on uh, on this particular project, but uh, when I was doing um, when I was doing Hot in Cleveland, uh, we spent some time together then. Yeah. Um, he's produ- yeah. he's producing that show. Right. Uh, and um, yeah, so we spent a lot of time on that. I have more time on this one. Um, I, I my stuff was pretty much with the uh, with the Fairley brothers, but um, I had a great time with him on on Hot in Cleveland on that set, and that set is pretty fun. Pretty fun, too. Yeah, that's for sure. Oh, look at all the actors on there. I mean, Fran Drescher and them. Oh, my gosh. It's just so funny. I love that. Or not, the Hot, uh, Hot in Cleveland is with Betty White and them. Um, I love watching both of those shows. Yeah, Hot in Cleveland. It's just, you know, you have, uh, you have Valerie Bertinelli, you have Jane Leaves, uh, Wendy Malick, and Betty mm-hmm. White. And they're and just Betty class White. act. Yep. They're funny. Yep. They're, yeah, they're just awesome. So... You know, they're just a great group of girls that that are just funny and, and just so talented. And uh, I, I had a, I had a great time doing that too. That was fun. Well, let's uh, rewind a little bit and talk about some soap experiences you've had. Let's begin with your most recent on the Amazing Night Shift um, Two, per se. Uh, for many people, they that they show people think that it represented a template for the future of soaps, nighttime, almost like telenovas, making great use of history. What can you share about that experience, and uh, what was your perception of how Jagger had matured as a man and as a father? Well, Night Shift was was great. I mean, I was um, I, I was actually kind of emotional when I stepped on that set because I haven't been, you know, I mean, I've been so close with Jagger over the years, and still am because the fans are always there. Um, they're always asking questions, so you can't really forget it, uh, even if you wanted to. You can't. Um, and not that I would, but it's it's always there, and it's always uh, it's always asked. You know, when you're going to come back mm-hmm. and play Jagger? You know, when you're going to come back? And it was, uh, you know, to tell you the truth, I wish it was up to me. I, I would I would be back today, but you know, it's up to the producers at ABC and the General Hospital to decide if that's a storyline they want to go in with. And uh, you know, I haven't received any calls, but if I did um, to come back and and play Jagger, I would. Um, I have great friends, and the show has always been close to me. Uh, so, talking about Night Shift, you know, that was the only that was the last season, and um, and I was I was proud enough to to be back and to be part of it, and to have a to have a son. It was great working um, um, with a little boy, and and to um, and to have Jagger just kind of mature into uh, into a father. And uh, but there's so much more that needs to be said, you know. Um, Exactly. Who's the mother? You know, yeah. There's so many. You know, with 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 daytime, you can just you can make it uh, any way you want. So uh, I, I think a lot of fans were kind of left off and go, "What happened to Jagger?" You know, we want him back, and I understand. So if ABC and General Hospital can, uh, if they ever decide to have me back, I'm I'm back, no doubt. <laughs> So it's why great do you think to hear. That, maybe with the new writers and that, maybe you know they're bringing back a lot of the old characters. Maybe you might be one of them, yeah. and I know a lot of fans will be up for it. Yeah, I, um, I mean that is the one question I've been asked since I left, since I left in uh, in '94. Um, when you're going to come back and play Jagger? And then when they when they saw Jagger back on Night Shift, that was that was very refreshing for a lot of them and. But uh, you know, at the same time, they want me back on 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 daytime, and I understand. So um, I am ready, and I think that with my experience being older and just uh, and I know that character better than anybody. That there's so many things that we can do with it, um, and to be working with Vanessa, maybe Vanessa Marcel would be great, and mm-hmm. uh, Maurice and uh, Steve Burden. These are guys that and and and, and girls that uh, I respect as people, and right. we have a history. So. Anything could happen. It's up to it's up to ABC to uh, to call me back, and uh, and I would be strongly devoted 
to be to be part of it. Yeah, with with um, with Twitter being as uh, popular as it is, it, our voices get heard a lot. Uh, for example, um, on Young and the Restless, an actress Melody Thomas Scott was not on air for six months. Uh, nobody knew why, but with the fans, they went behind and they tweeted and tweeted and they joined together as the fan community. And now Melody Thomas Scott is on it almost every single day now. So their voice is out there for Jagger. And if you, if, if me and Pam have anything to do with it, we will start a, rev, you know, start a revolution in Twitter to try to, you know, let them be heard that we, <laughs> we definitely want Jagger back. <laughs> Well, I have to tell you That'd because be I'm in the cha- I'm, I'm in the chat room right now. The, the, everybody's saying, "Okay, new campaign. Here we go. We're going to start tweeting <laughs> out to Frank Valentini and Ron Carlovati, and we're bringing Antonio back as Jagger." <laughs> so expect to see your that'd name be a lot. Awesome. That'd be, that'd be, <laughs> listen, if anybody can do it, is the fans. The fans can can do much. I mean, if it wasn't for the fans, I certainly wouldn't be talking here to you. So. I, I have great respect for the fans. Always will. Uh, that's the way it's going to be. And you know, there there is no actors without people going to watch these actors. And daytime fans are just awesome. They're really awesome. Yeah. Since we're talking about Jagger, um, how did that? How did you even get cast at that? How did that all come about? Uh, with Night Shift? No, with with General Hospital back in when you first started. Oh, the original. Um, well, I, uh, I back in uh, I believe it was back in 1990. I uh, I screen tested for another character um, on the show. Um, I don't remember the name of it, um, but <clears throat> excuse me. I um, I screen test and I went screen test after screen test, and I, at the end, I didn't get it, and I was really bummed out because I really wanted to be part of General Hospital. And it was just. Uh, it was kind of like a mythological TV show. It was just bigger than life. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I went and did my uh, my thing. You know, I uh, traveled the world, did some movies in Italy. I uh, went back to acting school. I went to Stella Adler. Um, I kept studying. Um, I never gave up. And then a couple of years later, I had the opportunity to screen test for the show again um, for a character named John Jagger Cates. And... Uh, <sighs> And then I just said, this time I got to, whatever it takes. And I remember I screen tested for two weeks, repeatedly over and over again. And then I had to wait a weekend to find out the outcome. And then the the Monday morning uh, in 1992, um, I got the call that I got it. And, um, you know, I was just the happiest guy. I think I I jumped on my bed and broke it in half. (laughs) Uh, I remember breaking the bed in half that night. I didn't have a, a bed to sleep in. Oh um, my gosh! It was really fun. And uh, uh, but I, it was it was it was amazing. Um, those are two years of my life that I just. Uh, I mean, I I can't tell you. I mean, it's, I I really can get emotional about talking about the storylines and. I remember screen testing Vanessa um, when when Vanessa's character Brenda came on board. Working with um, with Karen, you know, with Carrie Shane, and introducing mm-hmm. Maurice's character, working with Steve Burden. Um, you know, if you look back at the at, at the storyline that Jagger had to go through, and and um, just you know, I worked with amazing people, uh, which by the way are still there, and um, and I get you know, great respect for everyone, and um, just it was really special. It was just two amazing years of my life. Uh, and then traveling all over the country and meeting the fans at the time uh, was was fascinating and receiving the mail. Um, so to be back as Jagger would be would be incredible. And I, like I said, there's 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 history in me. You know, I've it's, it's been a little bit of time right now, and you know, I would I would bring back Jagger with a bang. You know, I really would. Uh, and you know, I have so much more passion for this for this business and what I do now than I ever did. So. I would I would hope that I could share that with the fans and the character. Yeah, and that and with you know and you know sadly we've lost two of ABC's uh, soaps this year and uh, with you coming back as a mm-hmm. historical character on the show the ratings would just show ABC that soaps matter too you know you know we're not going down with the fight so having someone as iconic as your character yeah. Jagger would really drive people maybe back to General Hospital or even from the other three soaps that are on to give the rating the boost as well because we need every viewer possible right now. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that uh you know, I I remember when I came on uh on board in nineteen ninety two and 
And back then, especially uh, when you did daytime, you kind of had to stay in daytime. And if you got the opportunity to work on um, on a TV show, you were stuck there. And if you're doing films, you were pretty much, you know, doing films. Uh, now it's everything for everyone. And um, it's kind of like mixed. You can do anything and nobody's going to judge you. You know, look at James Franco and a bunch of other actors and oh, yeah. Eric Roberts and, um, you know, just people, yeah. you know, the, need to find work, you go find work, and acting is acting at the end of the day. Well, um, I was always promoting that, and I was always trying to do things that were pretty much out of the box. I remember at the time in 92, um, I was the first daytime actor to be on the cover of uh, TV Guide, and I was the first um, soap opera actor to be uh, on Arsenio Hall, and um, you know, or, or things like that. And and I'll never forget that because I, I fought for things that were different and unique. Uh, and I would fight for those things right now because this business is an incredible business. Um, and a lot of people, I would say the majority of people, um, even in Australia, you know, for the Australian actors like Hugh Jackman and people like that, they started on their version of soap operas. So, and the American actors have started on, you know, Demi Moore. And I mean, I, I, it, the list is long. I don't even. Everybody knows, and um, I think over the years people tend to forget where they came from, and what gave them that opportunity. And I think daytime has, it has given so many opportunities to a lot of amazing people, uh, actors, and they've made it into movie stardom and whatnot. But they they tend to forget about talking about it. And I was never, you know, I was never shy. I was like, uh, it's like I'm proud. To be part of General Hospital, I'm proud to have the had the opportunity to work on that show, and, uh, and to work with Wendy Rich, and on ABC, and like I said, to work with those amazing actors that are still on. You know, some of them are still on, and some of them are not. But at the end of the day, uh, it was amazing. So for me to go back would be incredible. So to all the fans out there, uh, if it was up to me, I'd be there right now. But uh, it's it's up to the people at ABC to make a choice and to see if Jagger needs to come back or not. Um, around well, the same uh, time speaking you were... of soaps, too, and since you were such uh, an icon in 1995 when you had your run as Jack Parisi on uh, Melrose Place, uh, the show was really mm -hmm. popular at that time. How did it differ as a soap from, you know, daytime to nighttime for you? For me, uh, there was no much difference. Um, you know, the preparation to, to get ready for a role, uh, to study your lines, to... to um, work on a character to make it real uh, it, to me is the same process um, so at the end of the day uh, it, maybe it was different in the, set, in, in the sense that when you show up at GH and, and you go to Hollywood and you're working uh, and you're doing a lot of scenes and 9 to 10 scenes or more um, there's a lot more memorizing and there's a lot more blocking and, and the pace is a lot faster because you got to get one show done on a daily basis Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, when you love something, and I tell my kids over at the academy, you know, if you love something so much, you know, you know, it doesn't matter if it's one hour or the whole day or the rest of your life. You just keep loving it more. And, I mean, look what we do for a living. It's it's pretty incredible um, that we get paid to do what we do. Um, and so, like I said, you know, if they brought me back now, my appreciation for this business and the craft and everything, it was so much more just greater in every aspect. Um because, you know, when you're young, for some reason, you go out and you, you look at it in a different way. You know, you go out, you get it, you don't get it, you keep moving. You, you got all this energy and all this stuff. Right now, it's, you know, it's, you know, it's my family, it's, it's, it's me, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of things. I'm taking care of, uh, you know, other parts of me. And, um, and also, I see it in a much broader perspective. So, um, for the fans and... and it's it's amazing now, so I'm ready to do whatever it takes to to get things done. But um, like I said, I I'm so fortunate to have that that time, those years, to to have those amazing uh, storylines, to work with those amazing actors, and and it's a produ the producer Wendy Rich at the time, which was the executive producer, was just a close friend of mine, and still is. Um, we had a connection. Um, the, the team of writers were amazing, and. Um, and I walked away with just learning on a daily basis. And by the time I left, I was like, that was an, it was like going to college. It was like, that was incredible. Not a better um, way well, to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> Not a better way to go to school, that's right.
Um, well, we could fast forward to this this last decade, and the, the daytime audience rejoiced again when you began to play Dante on The Bold and Beautiful. It felt uh, like a natural fit to yeah. you, um, too, but since Bold and Beautiful does so well in Italy. The role of Dante ended fairly quickly, though, and Dante was always underdeveloped. What do you think happened there? Well, uh, you, you know, I uh, I wasn't supposed to be there that long, and I think because, you know, with with a show like Bold and the Beautiful, it's really challenging because it's only a half hour long, so, and, and you have... Um, you have a you know a pretty good amount of people who uh, need to work on a daily basis, so it's it's tough to write storylines that last quickly, so you can keep everyone working. Uh, and I always told Brett Brett Bell, uh, the executive producer, who was a friend of mine, who was a gentleman, that if he ever needed me uh, to come back, um, I'll, I'll be there, and I'll, I will be there to support Dante and, and the whole show. And basically, what happened there was there was just a time of uh, storyline changes, and I decided that I wanted to uh, to take some time and, and going back and doing movies and um, doing other things. Um, you know, the fact was that Dante was not going to be used for the time being, so um, I'll just I'll just take off and, and and I'll be back as soon as he needs me, and um, and that's how that's how I went and. Uh, and I'm, I was very open about the fact that you know if he ever needed me, uh, I'd be there. So, so those are two roles that I that I'm close to. You know, Dante's one and Jagger's the other one, and they're different people, uh, different characters. And so, the daytime is open for me. It's uh, we'll see if 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 they will call and I will be part of it. I mean, with well, bold and beautiful for me uh, in a personal level, um, because my family's in Italy. Um, my cousins uh, in Sicily and in Rome. Uh, when I went back after they saw me on TV, it was it was just um, it was very personal uh, to be on TV over there um, and having Italian fans, which is incredible. It was just uh, it meant the world to me. So Bold and the Beautiful is very personal in um, in other in in other ways and uh, and give me the opportunity to go back home and and, and to to introduce myself to a whole new. Uh, wave of fans that you know they're from where i'm from and that was cool that was really awesome yeah. can you walk down the street without anybody coming up to you in italy and you know really be fanatic about it <laughs> they were just awesome yeah they 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 certainly knew my name and the, the the cool thing about it was it was really interesting that uh when i went back the first few times um all these fans came up and they started speaking to me in English, thinking that I was American. And then I just started speaking in Italian. I was like, well, your Italian is pretty good. I'm like, well, I'm Italian. I was born in Rome. I am Italian first. <laughs> so it was like, <laughs> it was awesome. Because they all thought that I was uh, I was born in the States and I couldn't speak English, uh, Italian. And, um, and then when I started just going off in Italian, I'm like, well, this kid speaks good, uh, good Italian. You know? Where'd you <laughs> learn that? I'm like, I was born in Rome. I'm from here. <laughs> <laughs> that um, is looking, so funny. Cool. Look, looking through um, now moving away a little bit from the soap world into the movie world and um, we're going to we're going to wrap this portion up so um, we can bring the fans on um you have, a, you have a long long resume of many different types of roles and i went through netflix this week just to see which ones were on insta and i and i watched them all just to, to see if i missed any but uh my my personal one of my personal favorites was the big hit back in the, the 90s with uh, mark Wahlberg. That was just such a great, great, great movie. It's one of my top 20 films of all time. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Oh, but then, cool. thanks. Um, another personal favorite of mine, and then I'll let, I'll let you know if, if uh, Pam has one. Um, it is, is about testosterone. Your your physicality, your openness has always made you a major heartthrob for not only the the soap fans, but also your the gay community as well. You've embraced that with your you know your portrayal portrayal of the gay man in the well received movie Testosterone. Uh, yet you are personally involved with mm -hmm. women, but what was it like to play that role, and was it was it difficult for you, or were you able to just just jump in and become that character? Um, I thought it was a I thought it was a phenomenal. Well, that. Oh, thank you very much. Um, like anything else, uh, you just have to you have to do your research and, and make it as real as possible. Um, you know, this character was was bisexual. Uh, he was a very complicated person. 
Uh, at the same time, it was kind of like a dark comedy in the way. So it was uh, it was very interesting. Uh, and to, Pablo was was just uh, you know you, you don't want to walk away from something from a character going no, it's not believable. It's not um, we, we don't believe that you are this person, and you just want to come as close as you can. So for me, it was interesting, and like any other roles. Um, like I said before, you know, about the, the career and, and why I'm in it is because the challenges have to be there and you have to create a challenge. Even if it's not there, you got to make it harder than what it is. Uh, and that's where I'm at right now in my life, that I'm just fearless about the kind of projects that I would like to do, uh, fearless as an actor as far as the kind of work that I would like to do. Um, and that role, uh, Pablo and Testosterone, was, was one of those roles that I that I really wanted to get and wanted to show people in the industry and that, you know, Antonio's here to stay. Uh, Antonio's a serious actor and um, and he loves what he does. So, uh, and I had a great time working with Sonia Braga, going to Argentina and, and working in Buenos Aires was, was fascinating. It was great. So, thank you for saying that. It really means a lot to me. And um, I had a great time really doing a film. Like, I mean, I really enjoy uh, being on the set and regardless what set it is, I really, it's the same thing with my uh, passion for motor racing. You know, when I go to a track and, I, and I'm and i sitting around in the garage working on the car or, or waiting for, for me to get out and, and test drive the cars, I enjoy it so much that I just talk to the mechanics, the engineers, and I just hang out all day. And before you know it, it's been like 24 hours. The same thing on the set, um, that I enjoy it. And whatever role I play, once I decide that I'm going to do it, I just really have a, a great time doing it. Um, it really makes me happy. I mean, Cheryl knows how happy I am when I'm working, uh, and and she supports me so much. And um, so I, I really enjoy what I do. I really am blessed with that. And uh, one more quick question: If there was a dream project out there that you could totally just take over and make it your own, do you have one? Um, and and more specifically. Um, would you like to maybe take on the next reboot of Batman? Since I know you're a huge Batman fan. Yeah, I mean uh, that would to to play Batman would be. Uh, I mean, for for people that know how much I love the character and um, <laughs> Batman is a personal thing, it would be it would be quite amazing. I uh, I tell people that I would do it for free, and they go, "No, you wouldn't." I say, "Yes, I would." Um, yeah, I, I think the, the the projects that I would like to do, um, I always wanted to make a movie about Formula One. Formula One is a passion for me. I, I've been following Formula One since I was young enough to to know what a car was uh, and, uh, and a race car was, and I still do, and I will always follow Formula One, and I had the pleasure to to uh, to race in some of those tracks, and so to, to, to do a movie about Formula One to play a race car driver would be personally just uh, awarding in so many levels and mm -hmm. also when I was in Italy last year I had the chance to kind of um, I look back at my father's movies uh, and he made some really good ones uh, especially back in the 70s um, not only Grand Prix was one of the greatest you know probably the best Formula One and the only Formula One movie um, that won three Academy Awards and just the greatest but I also looked at another movie that he did was a Western and so I, I was able to find the rights for this movie, and this is something I would like to do. It's it's a movie called Hate for Hate. Um, the movie was produced by MGM, and my father starred in this film, and I would like to make the remake of that. It's kind of like a spaghetti western, but it was really cool and fun, and um, if you could bring it back nowadays, uh, it'd be great. So if anybody out there wants to produce it, uh, give us a call, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's there's not enough westerns anymore. You know, everything's all remakes of old horror movies and sequels and prequels. It'd be nice to see a new a new uh, western that, to hit the theaters. Yeah, yeah I know that would make fun. my husband happy. He loves westerns, so do it. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Especially the, well, spaghetti, the spaghetti westerns are, are so awesome and fun. I remember growing up watching those movies. They're just cool. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and open up the lines to the fans, uh, so we can spend the, the, the remaining of the hour with the fans. Um, the first, the first person I'm going to take on, his name, his name is Leon, and he is the creator and writer of a web series called Old Dogs New Tricks. And he asked specifically to be able to talk to you, so I told him I would definitely bring him on. So, Leon, you are on with Antonio. Yeah. Go ahead. Hey guys, thanks for blowing my cover. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> First hey, of man, all, how are you, Bob, buddy? I'm doing great. First of all, I want to say, listening to your interview, I, I'm an L.A. actor, and it seems like so many actors, when they reach a certain point in their career, they just become kind of jaded, and it's just a job. And I have to say, it's, it's very inspiring to hear how much love and passion you still have for it. I think that's a... a oh, thanks, great, Brent. I, thank you. It's a great I do. I, I really enjoy it. Well, thanks. And I, um, and, yeah, go ahead. Your, your career, I mean, you've really done everything. You've done daytime, you've done primetime, you've done movies. Um, have you ever thought about doing a web series? Well, we did uh, We did a web series, uh, what was it called? Uh, we did a uh, movie called Little Women, uh, Big Cars, uh, with Alexis uh, Denning Soff and Christy Swanson and Krista Allen, uh, Amy Yasbach, and um, yeah, we, we did it uh, last year. It was directed by Melanie Mayron, which uh, oh my God, really the 30 cool director. Something. She is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, so and cool. Ed Begley, uh, Bigley Jr. was in it. Julie Warner was in it. Uh, it was it was just a lot of fun. It was different, and uh, I I never I didn't really see the project, but I had a fun doing it. Uh, so I wouldn't mind doing it. Um, I, listen, I just enjoy performing, and I enjoy what I do. So to me, uh, if if the script is good, and we have a good director on board, it's, well, we I'm, have a I'm great okay. director. Our director is amazing. He's just twenty seven year old. USC Vunderken. He's just amazing. The reason I bring it up is we're starting our second season shooting in the fall, and there's a part in there that you would be great for, and I was wondering if there's any way I could send you a script and uh, see if you might consider it. Well, my agency is uh, GAA. Uh, GAA, cool. J yeah, GAA, and you can talk to Cynthia. I'm sorry, uh, and everybody's going to so call her. Too. I'm sorry. My agent's name, name is Ernie. Uh, Cynthia Booth. Cynthia, gotcha. Yeah, cool. and just call her up, and uh, as as well as everybody else who's listening. <laughs> and, uh, <that's, laughs> no, I'm gonna have to fight off all these people uh, calling with offers. That's okay. Uh, yeah, that's finally, okay. Go for say, it. I really want to uh, tell you how much I admire your fearlessness in playing gay and bisexual roles. I know. Uh, certainly in the Latin communities, I don't know about it, Spain, but th there can be kind of this hesitancy, this kind of, ooh, I don't want to go there. And I really admire the fact that you you seem pretty fearless when it comes to that. Yeah, I have nothing. I have nothing to, you know, I have nothing to hide. You know, I have nothing. It's it's my work. So whatever I need to do to to accomplish the job, um, you want to do it and have the opportunity to do so. Uh, it's great. I mean, that the like I said earlier, you got to find a challenge in everything. Otherwise, just you can't just do the same thing every day. You got to you got to find that that thing. You know? Yeah. Do you so, find do you find that call it helps to be? Yeah. Does, do you find it helps yeah. you to be a little afraid of a part you're playing? Like you don't know exactly. I what think you're that. Do uh, well, that takes the work, and I, I think what I've learned from. Um, from my acting teachers like Dennis Laval and Howard Fine, uh, that over the years, um, and also you get older and you, you start looking at, at the projects and how you prepare yourself in a so much more uh, professional way and the work that you take to really establish that. And, and um, you know, and, and, and the work that it takes to get before you even shoot the first scene, uh, mm -hmm. it's great. Um, I'm yeah. looking forward to uh, things in the future. Because uh, once people understand what kind of actor I am and what kind of things I really want to do, and, um, then the sky's the limit. And I'm not going anywhere. I, I've always told people that um, you might not see me for the moment, but I'm always working. I'm always trying to get a job. And I'm always trying to change people's minds about the kind of career I want. Um, you know, some jobs I've taken for uh, reasons, you know, for, for, for business reasons, some, some jobs I've taken sure. and I walked away was just... <clears throat> You know, my appreciation for the business was even better after that. So well, you know, I'm Stocker, not going anywhere. I'm just the Stalker Channing rule about there are three rules about taking a job. Either one, it's going to help your career. Mm -hmm. Two, it'll make you a better actor. Or three, you'll make a lot of money. And if you can get two out of three, you should take the job. I was kind of like that. I like that. That's pretty, that anyway, perfectly I will, right. I, 
I won't keep you. I will send a script to your agent. And if you get a chance to, we've got five episodes from first season online now. If you get a chance to look us up, Old Dogs, New Tricks, the series.com, I'd love to have you take a look and consider joining us for our second season. It's a wonderful series. I've watched it, so you know, it's and wonderful. Pam has, Pam has my number. She can give it to you um, um, if you're so inclined. All right. Well, thank you okay. so much, Leon, for the call. Thanks, thank you. Thanks for thank taking you, the time. Thank you, Leon. It was, it, it was an honor. Bye-bye. No, no problem. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Huh? All right. Calling up next is area code 508. Oops, just a moment. Let me push that again. 508, you are on the line with Antonio. Go ahead. Oh, oh my gosh. I, this is the first time I've been on the air that I've been nervous because I feel starstruck at the moment. Um <laughs> This is Stacy, oh. fanatic about soaps. And, hi, Stacy. Um, hi, Pam. Hi, I'm like, hi, I, I I'm, I'm shaking right now. I just, I don't know. I'm just very off to me, and I've said it before, um, but oh gosh, to verbalize it. And gosh, I'm talking to An- Antonio Sabata Jr. Wow. <laughs> um, I um, I just first want to say I follow you on Twitter, and I really um. I've tried to keep a positive attitude in life, um, and I really find your tweets inspiring. So first, I want to thank you. Thank you you very much. And I also want to thank you. I've seen you on Bold and the Beautiful. I've seen you on Melrose Place, General Hospital, and have loved your acting. And um, I just want, I just can't express enough. Um, to you and all the other soap actors out there. I really, I said it in the chat room, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I mean, I've I've become cynical to to movie stars and some primetime actors who seem to um, become, quote-unquote, Hollywood, where they're, you know, they just kind of have this attitude and really don't care much about their fans, and it's all about the money. And I can tell from talk, you know, hearing you talk that, you know, you definitely have a passion for what you're doing. This is, in a way, kind of your calling from what I see, so I wanted to thank you for that. And to me, it's the soap actors who are the, the true stars out there, and I think that's why I'm, like, kind of sounding jumbled and shaken up and the whole thing. Like I said, I just I can't believe I'm, I'm talking to you on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I, I guess that the, the um, only question I would have, well, I guess that's, Gosh, I have so many questions for you, but I don't want to take up everybody's time with my questions. But if I had the one question I would ask is, of the two roles on the role on Bold and Beautiful and the role on General Hospital, if you had your choice mm-hmm. of between those two and or, I guess, the third option, um, another role on one of the other two soaps, uh, which would you choose? Oh, that's tough to tell uh, to say. I, I I would say I'm just so close to either one of them. But you know, Jagger is always going to be personal in so many ways because that was my my the role that kind of changed uh, my career. Um, yeah. But having Dante as well was was really personal. Like I said, because you know he's he's Italian. The show is probably the biggest show in Italy, and. Uh, that's my mother country, and and so I would say I can't really tell. I, I would say either one of those would be would be awesome to to go back and revive. Um, well, so I'm hoping they'll bring you. I, I'm hoping they'll bring you back. I'm, I'm actually um, kind of pulling more for them bringing you back as Jagger, as I'm sure you know. You know, with the soap genre as a whole, General Hospital is kind of the one on the chopping block at the moment, and I know we're. As fans, mm-hmm. we're doing everything within our power to keep the genre going. Um, I started a few years ago just watching soaps that I had never watched before, like Guiding Light and As the World Turns. Um, right. Because I, fa- I found, um, not to get, not to talk too much, but I, I, um, I have chronic pain, I'm disabled, and I have found that, um, honest to God, the one type of show that can actually distract me enough to take me away from my pain are soap operas. You know, I've, I have mm. prime time sitcoms that I find funny and everything, but for whatever reason, and I think studies have even shown that soap operas, you know, provide um, that kind of benefit to people such as myself. So, um, anyway, I don't... That's I, awesome. Uh, that's- 
I feel like I'm going off on a tangent here. I don't want to take up all your time, but thank you, um, thank you again. And like I said, just know that, you know, we're pulling for you. We really, um, really, I can't express enough appreciate all that you guys do, and you give back to us, and you share your gift with us, and it it means more than I can put into words. So, and thank you, Pam and Doug, for bringing well, me on, even though thank I'm you. like. You know, I'm still shaking, and I'll get on the phone, and I'll be like, I don't know what the heck I just said, but <laughs> I can listen back. But thank you guys so much, and you're thanks welcome. for bringing Antonio on. And Antonio, again, thank you so much. It's you're my welcome, pleasure. and thank thanks you for calling, much. Stacey. All right, thank bye, you, guys. Bye-bye, Stacey. Bye-bye. All right, coming up next is area code 701. 701, you're on with Antonio. Come on, Antonio. Oh, hey, how are Sarah. you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Hi, I'm the Sarah. one that gave um, Pam that lovely little comment. It's uh, I research soap operas, and I'm working okay. on my thesis. And I was looking, checking up track date, and that's where I found that comment. And I said, "Oh, I've got to tell Pam." So that's where mm-hmm. that comment comes from. That's great. Um, I I do have a curious question for you, and I have watched uh, a fair amount of your work, and I also saw one of your father's movies. Which is because we have something called this TV in the United States, which is a sub in this area, which is a sub digital sub channel, and it actually had your uh-huh. movie on about three days ago. I'm thinking you're going. This is interesting. Which one? The Western one. The Western one. No, it's, well, he's done a lot of them. Do you remember the name of it? Um, translated to something to the Great Ride. Unless it's real oh, bad wh- translation. What color is was it? Was it was um, did he had a personal horse that followed him everywhere, or yeah, he had a horse that followed him everywhere, and it was a pretty horse. That was more yeah, well, than watching. That's probably hate. So yeah, that was that's probably hate. Movie. hate. That's probably, yeah, it was cool. Well, my father did a lot of westerns. It was it was a good time. It was a really good time in Italy, especially in the seventies. It was it was a lot of fun. So hopefully, I'll be I'll be able to bring one of those movies back here. Um, I do have a curious question. It's something, you know, and I've seen your professionalism when you've worked on screen and when, and your, how you've presented yourself in modeling and this. But I've always wondered, like, what do, you, what do you draw from your inspirations for, like, when you're fleshing out your characters and stuff like that? Oh, for the characters, um, just do as much research as you can, uh, as much work as you can, and, and get as much information as you can. Uh, over and over again, even when you're working uh, on the actual set, and you just create something from your own personal um, history, or just um, as much as you can about the specific character you're playing. Uh, the more information, the better. So by the time you show up, you, you know as much as you can about the person you're playing, and you're more comfortable, and you have as much history as you have as you can have about the specific character. No, and I enjoy that process very. In the case uh, of the U.S. You. soaps, have you ever had the opportunity to do voiceover work for American programs going over to Italy? Not yet. Not yet. I haven't yet, but I will, I, that would be interesting. It would be fun. Yes. Well, I will let you, you go, and it's been a pleasure to chat with you, and best wishes on your future thank you. endeavors. All right. Thank, thank, thank you, you very Sarah. much. Yep. Bye, Pam. Bye-bye. Uh, up next is area code 901. 901, you're on the air with Antonio. Hi, Antonio. I actually talked to you on Frank in November. Um, via How are you? Fine. How are you doing? Uh, I'm very well. Thank you. you again. Um, it's a lot easier to talk to you through here than face-to-face because, like I said, like uh, Stacy was saying, you kind of really make the heart beat faster <laughs> when you're <laughs> talking to you. <laughs> Um, but I actually had, I wanted to ask you, because I'm currently writing a screenplay, and I think I told you back then, like, you you really just kind of inspire me, so I'm actually kind of basing the character on you, and it's actually, I mean, I guess character-wise, what do you look for in, like, I guess, your perfect character, somebody who's going to write a script especially for you? Um, well, you know, there, there's got to be something challenging in, in his life while we see it on the screen uh, that that he obviously has to overcome. Um, I always, uh, you know, uh, always wanted to play a character with a huge heart. And 
very much in love with someone and and you can see the arc of this love story you know a love story would be incredible to do um because I have a big heart myself, so I think I, I would bring a lot. I would bring a lot to a character like that, and uh, you know, the movie Love Story is actually a film that I really like. Um, yeah, my, my and, um, kind of goes in that that vein. It's soap opery. Well, they, it's it, it, it takes well, all there the you go. I, I, soap opera. Um, I guess. Well, there you go. Uh, there was another I question. I suggest a reality you. show. I, I think you're uh-huh. underutilizing the reality genre. So I think you're, you know, I think you'd be really good at obviously coming back to GH and obviously doing a sitcom. Um, but if you had to do, mm-hmm. I guess, another reality show, have you thought about like maybe doing an, one like kind of like Dance Moms for your acting academy? <laughs> that would be good. I never thought of that one. I that never would thought be of good. That. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that'd be good. And obviously doing a fitness video. That'd be good. <laughs> yeah, like well, I said, yeah, that would that would be fun too. You would totally sell that out in like the first day. <laughs> <laughs> well, anybody well, who's listening, you. there you go. Make 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 it happen. <laughs> That's what we well, got to do to get you out there. <laughs> thank you so much for your call. Okay. I thank you, and it was good talking to you again. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna take we're gonna take one last caller, and then we're gonna wrap up for you. I'm just gonna pick another random number. Area code three two one. Area code three two one. You are on with Antonio. Hello, this is Denise. Hi, Antonio. Nice to talk to you. Hi, Hi Denise. Denise. How are you? Yeah. I'm great. Thanks. It's been a great show. Listen, I just wanted to ask you, I'm going to take you back to the Calvin Klein days. What was it like doing the video mm-hmm. with Janet Jackson? Well, actually, the Janet Jackson video was even before I did General Hospital. That was uh, I know. that was back in uh, nineteen uh, ninety ninety or ninety one. Yeah, we're looking back at yeah something like that. It was before I even did General Hospital. That was that was the time that um, I you know I did that video and it was just it was so cool to work with Janet and Janet over the years has been just amazing, always kind to me and. Um, She's been the same person from day one. And then I did General Hospital after that. So that video kind of put me on the map, but nobody really knew who uh, who that kid was, you know? They just said, well, that kid in the video. But then when I did I GH, it was were. kind of... Uh... <laughs> oh, you did? <laughs> I knew who okay. yeah, I saw cool. well, you thanks. on GH, where you came from. I I knew the minute. I can remember it, even though it was so many years ago, I can remember it like it was yesterday. Who is uh, that thanks. guy? I remember, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm that guy, right? <laughs> You're that guy. Thank you so much for taking my call. I know you guys are at the end of the show. Thank no you, problem. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. You Thank you. Thank thanks. you. We got a break. All right. Uh, well, that wraps up that. Um, I, we, you know, there's, a, there's many more callers on there, but as uh, the followers and listeners of our show, we try to wrap it up as close to an hour to respect the time of our guests. So, Antonio, um, just a quick thing. I We've been pimping you out on uh, Twitter as to get as many more followers as possible, and I've been keeping track since the day that I invited you to the show to now you've gotten 680 more followers. So we're getting there for you. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that. No problem because You're I, because for for me you know your, your the positive things that you say like the the uh, Stacy who called maybe having a bad day and your tweet could just make a difference in making someone feel better so and that's what I do with my personal Twitter I try to tweet out positive things because that is what's going to keep us going in our dark times so thank you so much for what you you do tweet out with us and uh, and definitely share more pictures too you, uh, I love when you you know the pictures of you with your car and your motorcycle and stuff like that we love to be able to behind the scenes of, of of the actor that we see on screen. So it's it's really a pleasure. And you know what? I have to Thank interrupt you. here. Speaking of pictures, I have a friend, Mary Cicconi, and she's listening into the interview right now. And as she's listening, she's huh. posting pictures on my wall on Facebook of Antonio um, from 2010 mm-hmm. at the National Italian American Federation party, I guess it was, and you're standing with a yep. few very beautiful models. <laughs> oh yeah, and yeah. I want well, to I'm thank very her much for that. that. 
Yeah, I'm very much part of the NIAF, which is the National American Italian Foundation, and I'm very proud of that. Foundation. Uh, I'm very proud of being Italian, and I'm very proud to be an American, and I take pride in being associated with the NIAF, and um, I will continue to do that. And um, Italians have done a lot of great things for this country, and um, I take pride in talking about that because uh, sometimes they're left behind, uh, and they've done more than, um, you know, shoot people down and then be gangsters right. and stuff like that. They've they've built a lot of beautiful cities and a lot of beautiful things in this country and Italians are awesome, so I'm really proud to be one. Thanks. And you know what else too? Um we're we're very knowledgeable about the NIF um cause and our federation. What did you call foundation? Sorry. Um because we do follow yeah. somebody else that is Italian and his name is Patrizio Buone. And he's a singer. Mm -hmm. He's also going to be on mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy tonight, on Jimmy Fallon. And he's going to cook and sing. Oh, so you might want to listen to him because right. he's an excellent singer. And he's a paisan. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I will. I'll check it out. Thank you. All right. That's awesome. Well, I just want to thank you again for doing this. And I would love to invite you back to the show later in the year once you have a, you know, a project that you'd like to talk about. We would love to have you back to talk about that project. And once Sounds we good. get you back Thank on you. the <laughs> Yes, and once and actually we'll have you back on when Jagger re returns to General Hospital. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you so much, and uh, you have a great night, and be sure to give Cheryl and the kids all of our love from Pam and I and all your fans, okay? Thank you. I sure will do that. Thank you so much. Have a great night, you guys. Thank all you. Right. God thank bless. Thank you, too. Bye-bye. And be sh be sure to uh, keep on listening. We've got a few things to uh, to discuss before we hang up. Uh, we had a lot of callers tonight, and I wasn't able to get to everybody as usual. But I tried to just do some random ones this time because I want to. You know, we have a lot of people who are the same people that call every week, so I like to do a little wrap. You know, rearrange it a little bit so that way we can get some different voices on the air as well. Um, so we've uh, just had an, an amazing interview with Antonio Sabato Jr. Um, it was it was great and informative. Once again, another great and informative interview. Uh, Pam, what were your thoughts about it? What else can I add to that? I'm just so <laughs> so grateful that he um, you know agreed to do the interview with us. I never expected it, but he is so kind and sweet and considerate of his fans that I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. Yeah. Yeah, and he and he and he spoke a lot. We let him, you know, we let him have the floor, and we learned. I learned. I personally learned a lot about him, and and it's really really great. So, my challenge to you, the listeners, is to get on that Twitter, get on that Facebook, go to abc.com. You do what you can to help get Antonio back on General Hospital as Jagger Case. You heard what he said. He can bring a lot more to it, and what I mentioned as well is bringing ratings to the show. Having him there will show that fans, you know, fans, we, we mean business when we're talking about saving the soap genre. So having him back on there, if you guys can do it for Melody Thomas on Young and the Restless, you can do it for, uh, and you also did it for Tristan Rogers because Tristan Rogers just announced, or the news broke today, that Tristan Rogers is returning briefly to Young and the Restless. So you fans out there, you're getting, you're getting your voices heard. You know, a lot of people were happy with, uh, certain things on the show and you speak your mind and things happen on our shows that we watch and that we're dear to us. So tweet um, using uh, follow Antonio first at Antonio Ben, I'm sorry, Antonio Sabato Jr. Uh, all, all under case and add that into all your tweets. Um, we'll have some links up on save the soap genre dot com as well. So we can uh, get easy tweets, easy, uh, <laughs> <that's a> twink. <laughs> easy tweets, <laughs> easy tweets. Sorry. Um, and also, the the movie that I talked about with him, I, I, I wanted to choose that movie in particular, Testosterone. It's uh, not a very popular movie because it's, it's a it's a gay themed film. Um, it's it's a wonderful film, and you get to see a diverse side of him that you've never seen in any other film. So I definitely want to help promote that film and, and, and let you guys go Netflix or rent it, download it, stream it, whatever you got to do. It's it's really good, and you get to see him in ways you never thought you would see him. That's all I'll say about that. Um, <laughs> also, we got an, we got some new developments in our casting for our show. I don't know why we said casting, guesting, guest stars. Uh, we just landed Tristan Rogers. He will be with us April 11th at 9 p.m. Eastern. We are also working behind the scenes to get Leslie Ann Down, who recently has played Jackie Maroney on Bold and uh, Beautiful. 
That would and be amazing. We've, we've also um, are still waiting on dates from Christoph St. John and Bobby Eakes, who played Macy on um, Bold and Beautiful. I'm also working with uh, Victoria Rowell's assistant to see if we can get her uh, a date. They're, they asked me for what date. There are some dates at them, so I'm looking to get that booked. Um, who else have we got today? Just I know we, we were talking back and forth today on Twitter that we've got a couple other uh, fits. I'm working Any, on Hunter Tylo right now. Yes, Hunter, yes, she's working with Hunter Tylo with her assistant as well. So um, I talked to Catherine Kelly Lang, and she said that she told Hunter Tylo about us. So Hunter is working with us. So I'm really, really excited to see Dr. T- Dr. Taylor Hayes Forrester on our program. So that's about it. Uh, we'll be back Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. We have no more shows for the week. We've had an all-star week this week with Sharon Case and uh, Kevin Kelly Lang, and tonight with Antonio Sabato Jr. Next week, we have on Tuesday, April 3rd, we have Ian Buchanan from Days of Our Lives, who plays Ian. It's nice to have a character named after yourself, easy to remember. Right. <laughs> and then we also have Signe Coleman, who has a new web series called River Ridge. And most of you will rem- know her most recently as her she reprised her role as a ghost as Hope Adam Wilson Newman, or Newman Wilson, on the rest list. So she'll be joining us on Wednesday next week at 9 p.m. All shows are always 9 p.m. Pacific, I mean, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific, unless otherwise noted. Um, I do send out um, invites also, through Facebook. Also, Doug, you don't know this, but I'm also working right now. I just got a, um, a message back from somebody that's uh, in touch with Hillary B. Smith, and oh. uh, we're working on getting her on the show. Oh, she's a cross-platform, multi-generational soap actress as well. She's currently on uh, Bold and Beautiful as Hope's therapist, so that's, that would yeah. be great to, uh, to have her on. So see, we're working hard behind the scenes to bring you the stars you love. So with that, I'll let you say your goodbyes, and then we'll sign off. Thank you, everyone, again for joining us. We love having you, and we hope you enjoyed the show as much as we have. And everybody take care and have a, a great upcoming weekend. God bless. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather. Um, something that a lot of people watched and, and respected and, and liked a lot, and we were uh, we had a great time doing it. And, and you know, it was it was hard for us. It was physically hard because you know I I had to um, you know I I was taking care of a of a small baby by myself as a father, and and Cheryl had to be away from from our son for almost five days, which was extremely difficult. Um, so for us as parents, it was difficult to be apart in such an early stages of our son. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, uh, we wanted to show um, a real life uh, that two people in the industry have, um, and what you see is what you get, you know. But you know, we, we, there's so much more to our lives, you know. If it, right. it would take a lot more than than 45 minutes to really establish that. Exactly, right. and um, we were we fans were glad that they had the additional segment at the end to know that you and Cheryl. We're doing we're doing good. So are, are things right. doing good since then? <laughs> yeah, my, you know, listen, uh, it, it's it's a reality show, and you have to have some some drama. You have to have some things like that. But uh, you know, we're not the the type of people that will have the industry or or uh, a TV show ruin our our lives. We, we're very serious. We're very devoted to each other as a family and as a and as a unit. And uh, and we care about each other extremely. So uh, we're real, um, and we're going to keep working on our relationship and our lives. And no TV show is going to split us up. I tell you that much. No, no. Wow. And you know I'm what? It's 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 a real relationship, as you said. Everybody goes through it. You just went through it on TV. That's all. So you know, yeah, nobody I, thinks uh, anything. 
Oh, it's fine. I, I, I you know, to be in this business, you gotta, you gotta be strong, and you, you can't mm-hmm. let uh, the outside world affect affect you. Otherwise, I wouldn't. I want to be in it, and I want to want to be in it for the rest of my life. It's it. Right. So for us, it's like, man, we're we're so happy. We're we're good, and uh, we're- Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Good evening. Welcome to the Soap Series. I am your host Doug, and uh, along with my co-host Pam. Pam, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. You're doing great. No, no problem. Uh, tonight we have a, an amazing guest with us tonight. You know him from multitudes of different genres, including soap operas on General Hospital and uh, and Bold and the Beautiful, uh, even over in uh, the film industry and reality TV shows such as My Antonio. And uh, most recently, this uh, this earlier in this year, we had Celebrity Wife Swap. So uh, we have Antonio Sabato Jr. with us right now. Welcome to the show, Antonio. Oh, thank you for having me. It's it's, uh, it's great to be here. Thank you. Ah, you're welcome. Okay, uh, Pam, I'm going to let you start off tonight. And, you're going to uh, let me? Okay. <laughs> Not I'm going to let you start off with the questions. Um, I usually always take, you know do the lead, but tonight, uh, for, for your, since you're a big fan, I'll let you start off tonight. So go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, I actually have a question from a listener that is with us in, at every show, except unfortunately he couldn't be here today. Um, and his name is David Salva, I don't know how to say it, S A L V A G N I. I think it's an Italian name. Um, and he says, I have a two part question for Antonio. Could you ask him how much he enjoyed singing and if he plans on continuing? Uh, yes, I do. I enjoy singing a lot. Um, it's one of my hidden passions. I really enjoy it, especially Italian music. I, I like to sing that a lot. Uh, yes, I, I, if I have the opportunity, and I will have the opportunity again in the future, I would love to sing again in front of a lot of people. I, I had the pleasure of going to uh, to Italy last year, and I sang in front of my whole country, uh, oh, which wow. was great. Um, yeah, it was awesome. I was, I was invited to... Uh, to sing uh, on a on a TV show called uh, in English it would be called uh, I Sing. No, I was just saying it's it's my pleasure to to oh. even be able to to say things that, uh, that mean a lot to me. Thank you. Um, actually, it's not even a question that I have. Um, my friend Sarah Adams, uh, she was reading a book by C. Lee Harrington and Denise Beebley, and uh, it's about soap opera fans. Uh, she wrote it, mm-hmm. I guess, in 1995, and she was telling me that on page 43, there's a quote by a soap opera fan that says, I cannot believe I just spent $750 for dinner with Antonio Sabato, Jr. Do you remember that? <laughs> really? <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't remember that, but uh, hopefully uh, she spent it right. Hopefully, it's, yeah. hopefully it turned out to be a good dinner. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I... Uh, Especially back in the day, I don't remember I'm sure that, but she I, loved I think it. it worked for it. <laughs> it must have been some kind That's of charity or fan event or something. I'm not sure exactly what it was. Yeah, I, I would hope so, and I hope that the food was good. Yeah, <laughs> really for that price. <laughs> Um, for any listeners that are listening, if you do want to call in and talk to Antonio uh, about halfway through the hour, we will be taking callers, 347-215-9503. If you're on the line already, you make sure you press 1. That is the only way I'm able to know that you want to talk to us. Okay. Um, one of your, uh, Antonio, one of your most recent widely seen appearances was on ABC Celebrity Live Swap. That, got to be, that has to be incredibly mm-hmm. personal. How did you decide to do that show? And in retrospect, what do you have to take away from that experience? Uh, we, uh, me and Cheryl, uh, had a great time. I mean, you know, in, in four days of somebody's life, you can't really put it in a nutshell what really happens. But, you know, it's a TV show. You want to make it entertaining um, and as real as possible, obviously. But, um, you know, from what I know, it was the most watched show on on, on the series. And it was uh, Io Canto. And uh, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a TV show based on like American Idol, but instead of having adults, this is all little kids and teenagers, um, all Italians, obviously, and I went there and I sang with the finalists who end up winning the show with a, with an amazing uh, teenager, 
uh, and we sang an Italian song together, and I had a great time doing it. So I would love to do more of that for sure. Oh, my gosh. Is that online anywhere so we can listen to it? Um, I think you probably can find it somewhere. Um, like I said, it's Io, Io Canto. Is it's an, it's mm-hmm. an Italian TV show that goes on for about four to five months at a time, and they should have a clip somewhere of me singing. And um, it's a special song to me. It's an Italian song from a, a guy by the name of Eros Ramazzotti, which is uh, one of my favorite artists. He's uh, from Rome. He's an Italian guy, and I love the song called Adesso Tu, which is um, now you, actually. And 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 I just sang it, and it was it was great to be there at home uh, in Milan, singing in front of the whole country, and um, I had a great time. So I I definitely would take an opportunity to do that again if I if I'm asked. Sure. Wow. That would well, be that's wonderful. I, that's one thing I did not know, and I thought I was a huge fan. I'm going to have to get on Google after this. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Me too. <laughs> um, well, I want to start out with the uh, the present, your Twitter timeline. Um, just some of your recent tweets are like, good night and wishing you a beautiful, amazing, loving week. And if I told you are amazing, would you believe me? Okay, great. You are. Um, a lot of these tweets are, are very, very spiritual and emotional. And the question is, what? where is the incredible spirituality and positivity coming from? Did you always have it? Or is it a newfound piece that you found in your life of recent years? Uh, I, I think I think you always hope that you have it. I think I have it more. I'm I'm just uh, spiritually. I'm very much um, a really happy person. Uh, I have everything I need, and I'm very blessed to have just so many great things. And um, and I like to share that with the world. Um, you know, I, I think that um, it takes work to be happy every day, and just to find something that you know makes you happy, like a family or. Um, or God, or your work, or whatever it is it may be, and just be blessed and just share it with the world. There's nothing wrong with it. And uh, I uh, feel that, uh, you know, right now in my life especially, I am grateful and blessed um, and looking forward to the future. So I, I uh, and, and then there's also, there's so much negativity and there's so much stuff going on in the world that it's quite the opposite. So I, I like to share things that uh, are pretty much um, heartfelt and good, and just go have a great day and and just go get them you know don't don't give up on your dreams you know and uh, just just keep fighting for it and uh keep having a smile on your face and those are my tweets pretty much i don't like to gossip i don't like to to talk politics or uh things to just uh you know they don't get me anywhere i like to think uh the more positive the more positive you can share um and the more you can give to anyone to strangers to anyone in the world uh, is a blessing. So I, I, I want to keep doing that. Well, that, that and I, I think a... more people should do that because it really makes life more pleasurable. Yeah, I, I, you know, I am, I'm not here to, uh, you know, the social media and, and the last, I mean, who would have thought, you know, 10 years ago that we would be tweeting and just sending mex- messages mm-hmm. and just little things <laughs> here and there all over the world. Uh, and now that we are so blessed to have that, uh, so fortunate to be able to speak our mind and say things, then why not just say the good things? Um, right. There's there's just so much of the bad, and there's so much gossip. Um, I tend to focus on, on really good things that make me happy, and if I can reach someone out there and help their day uh, by sharing what I'm doing, then I want to keep doing that. Thank you. We appreciate that. <clears throat> my uh, my next question... Really? I'm sorry. 